The good old chilli. We British love it. It's heat and flavour, whether in curries, on pizzas or even in chocolate. But there are some people who take things just a little bit too far. Meet the Clifton Chilli Club. Based in Bristol, they get together to share their passion for this seriously hot and spicy. And it's not just about eating, they grow their own chilies too. Chilies come in all shapes and sizes, not to mention heats. And to be honest, I wouldn't call myself a curry head diehard, but I want to meet them to see if I can discover what makes them tick. What have we got here? What's this one? It's called an RG Hot from the family of RG um, chilli peppers. You get an RG Lemon um, and other RG citrus flavoured um, chilies. It's, it, it has got a real citrus kick to it, that chilli. Really good flavoured chilli, but citrusy. The heat of a chilli is measured in Scoville units. The hotter the chilli, the higher the number. Your average jalapeno on a pizza might well be around 4,000 on the scale, but that's nothing. These guys wouldn't even look at a chili below 20,000 Scovilles. And I was always told that the smaller the chili, the, the, the bigger the punch with the heat. Is that about, is that about right? It's not necessarily, but it is pretty much the case. If you think of a bell pepper, what you'd use to chop into mm. a salad, that's pretty much the starting point. On the Scoville scale, that's zero. And then it goes up from there. So as a general rule of thumb, the smaller, the hotter, but not necessarily. So this chilli looks pretty harmless. Anywhere between 20 and 30,000 scovels. That is nearly seven times hotter than a jalapeno chilli. Surprisingly, these guys can taste flavour behind all that heat. What are these here, these yellow ones? Sort of yellow green ones, really, aren't they? Mm. That's another form of the RG uh, family. Yeah. So a Mexican chilli. Um, spicy and flavourful, but that citrus flavour again. Is it quite strong on the Scoville? Is it quite pungent? You know, yes. Hot? Yeah. yeah. It is. But, but uh, the RG family is sort of 100 to 200,000, so wow. we've gone up quite a, quite a level. And moving on to this one here, you've got the green and the red, and obviously that looks more like a, a pepper yes. than it does a chilli. Like a sweet pepper. Yeah. Is, what is this, then? That's the Crimson Lee. Um, really, really nice. It's very sweet, very, very sweet. So it's a chilli, but, you know, you could probably call it a chilli pepper. The Clifton Chilli Club have become infamous. Sauce makers send them their new products to be reviewed on their YouTube channel. We get sent um, sauces from all around the world. Um, some, uh, some importers in the UK, um, they specialise in it, and sometimes they send us a little box of goodies. We get them try them, review them, um, and give our honest opinion. I'm a coma man, so I'm probably in the wrong area at the moment. The guys assure me that my delicate and refined taste buds won't be permanently damaged by chilli heat. This one here, the yeah. smoked chipotle, what, what sort of level will that be? Um, that one uh, is, is like a, a nice spicy daddy sauce. I mean, jalapenos are around about three to 5,000 mm. um, as a standard. So here goes, a sauce with jalapeno chilli in it. That's really good, that. That one didn't affect me too much. It wasn't a serious kick. The chilli club, though, have something stronger up their sleeves. Chocolate habanero chilli is the chilli. A chocolate habanero chilli can be as much as 500,000 on the Scoville scale. It tastes like habanero, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's actually hit uh, sides and right at the back. Yep. I think this sauce um, would work really well with some good quality clotted cream ice cream. Uh, it would counterbalance the heat, the two flavours. That would go really well with ice cream. Yeah. Well, I can feel it there now as well. That My eyes normal. are watering. Is that a normal reaction? <laughs> What's happening in your body when this is all happening? Um, first of all, you, it's your pain receptors, and that's what gives you the, the heat, the sensation of burning. How do you combat eating a chilli, feeling the reaction of what's happening inside my body? Milk is a, an any dairy product is very, very good. Um, basically, what it does, it goes in and it coats the mouth, so it instantly tries to cover the nerve endings. It's like a, a milky, oily layer and straight on there. This is when Chili Dave ate a raw seven-pot habanero over a million on the Scoville scale. <laughs> Eating chili regularly does allow your taste buds to become acclimatised to the heat, but there is one jar on the table even they can't open yet. 
This one's called the, the Source, mm -hmm. um, and that's 7.1 million Scoville. That's why that's under lock and key. It's <laughs> just, just in case it gets in the wrong hands. I can hardly believe there is a market for a Source that's that hot. Definitely not for me. But I'm here to find a chili that will work in my pie. These are Hungarian hot wax. It's quite a meaty chili. It's quite a fleshy chili. On the Scoville scale and things, I would say they're about 2,000 Scovilles. So I know this is much milder than what these guys eat, but I'm stopping here. This will do nicely. Are these are these ripe now? As you can see, the some chilies are, are yellow and turning green. Um, others go in orangey and red. From our point of view, use a red one. That's okay. it. It's ripest, most mature, most flavoursome, and most hot as well. In terms of heat value in a chilli, people think the seeds are the hottest part of the chilli. They're not. Oh. Where the seeds join the chilli, there's like a membrane, like a, a pith in an orange, and that contains all the natural oils of the chilli, and that's the hottest part. Oh, so when right. chefs de-seed chilies, what they're doing is scraping out the oil and the membranes rather than the seeds. Ah, oh, right, OK. But, generally, down here is the, uh, not the hottest part of the chilli, so right. if you want to try a bit, yeah. that's a good place to start. OK. Now, you'll find it's quite a fleshy chilli, good flavour, and a bit of heat slightly builds up on it. Mm. It's a slow burn, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Very, very low. But very, very low. That's got a beautiful flavour as well. Very pepperish, you know, sort of chilli pepperish. Mm. Um, but it's, it's almost like a like black peppercorn. It's got that, mm. you know, you can just... But it's not overpowering. I'm liking this more than I expected. There's flavours going on here, not just heat. I'm going to enjoy that, actually. <laughs> um, I'm going to take some of these, actually. Do you mind if I use one of that, that is That bit of heat now, and I can feel it building up. It's perfect for my recipe. No <laughs> Thanks very much indeed, guys. Thank you very, Thank you very much. It. Thank you. Along with my Hungarian hot wax chilli, my pie is a rich, meaty filling of slow-cooked shin of beef, topped with an easy cornbread lid to soak up the spicy sauce. Hot-footing it here from Bristol with the ingredients for my chilli beef cornbread pie are Jim and Dave. Hi, fellas. Hi. Hi. The chilli boys have brought with them some of the hottest chilies they know. Um, this one here is the uh, Dorset Naga, which used to be a uh, world record holder, and that was created down in Dorset, I, I, as the name suggests. Mm -hmm. um, that one alone is about 900,000 on the Scoville scale. Um, which is okay. a, a nice one. That's a hot one. Yeah, and then this one is the, the Butch Tea. Um, this rates about 1.4 million Scoville. <laughs> the juice of raw chilies can be painful in your eyes or cuts, so handle them with care. You're going to have to eat one of these hot chilies. Which one are you going to have? Well, one of these super hots. Either or the other, or the Naga, Dorset Naga. OK, I'll go for the Dorset Naga. Dorset Naga. Let me just cut it up. Do you want me to cut it? You can cut it, yeah. All right. Don't try this at home, folks. Leave it to the professionals. This could be painful. It won't be. <laughs> what is it? It's only 900,000. Ah, that's for me, isn't it? That's for you. <laughs> you, you. You sound nervous. There you go. Thank you very much. So this is 900,000 on the Scoville. Are you absolutely certain? <laughs> 100%. You don't have to. No, no, it's fine. OK, I've got mine. This is a Hungarian hot wax. What's yeah. this one? Uh, about three to 6,000. Here we go. I'll try this one. All right, go on, then. Let's have the three. I've got some milk if you want some, OK? Cheers. I didn't actually expect them to eat a raw piece at all. <laughs> I'm feeling the heat on this one. You're at 900,000. 900, 900, 900, no, it's certainly hot. I mean, you get the, wow. the different heat. I don't know how it's affecting you. Have you got a, on the tongue or a certain part? I'm getting... <clears throat> I'm getting it on the side, but it's it's not that bad. Right. I mean, it, it's, <coughs> it's, it's controlled some milk. Now, milk is the best thing to have when you've had chilli, not water. Water enhances it and makes it even worse. And the milk acts as like a, a coating that covers your uh, your taste buds and your pain senses. So, uh, how, how are you feeling, guys? Uh, yeah, good, but that's one hot chilli. That is one hot chilli. 900,000 Scoville's nothing to be sniffed at. OK, I'm going to get cracking with the cooking. Over here, I've got a pan, a little bit of oil inside. Now, I'm going to be using 
shin of beef, it's got more kick to it, yeah. um, ironically. <laughs> so, what <laughs> I'm gonna do, so what I'm going to do is add the chilli to this as well, but not at this stage. So the first off, I'm just going to put the meat in and brown it off. Now, what's the point of a chilli like that with the heat? Is it purely down to the fact that because you can? I mean, they're hybrids, aren't they? They've been made, they've been grown specifically yeah. for their heat. Yeah. For what purpose? A lot of countries, I mean, we've got a, a chilli there called the Seven Pot uh, Habanero. Um, you know, and the legend goes, basically, one chilli can, you can cook seven pots of curry. So, effectively, you know, if you want a really super hot curry or uh, a dish of some form, then you just put one chilli or two or three chilies in it. Um, and uh, then you've got the milder ones, like the Hungarian hot wax, and that's a really good sort of general product that you can use. Um, and it's the flavour, but then you just up it and up it as well, so you can get the different flavours and the different textures. When the beef is sealed, I'm allowing it to rest and reusing the same pan for my chopped white onions, oregano, tomato puree, garlic, and some unsweetened cocoa powder. A bit unusual? It is unusual. I mean, it goes with beef. I mean, it, game it goes particularly well with. But chilli and chocolate? Yeah. The, the whole thing about chocolate is it's not just sweet. Yeah. The purer the cocoa, the more bitter it is, and then the bitter goes with the savoury dish. OK. Just browning off those onions, sweating them down a little bit. This chilli is a Hungarian hot wax. Mild to these guys, but certainly hot enough for me. Having tried this raw, I feel I can take this fella. You know, I feel quite sure? comfortable with this one, yeah. This is where your store cupboard ingredients come into their own. In. Add tin plum tomatoes and slice roasted red peppers from a jar. A tin of red kidney beans and rich beef stock. Give that a stir and at that stage, you can put your meat back in and then leave that to cook for about two hours, just on a simmer, just pop a lid on it and then leave it alone. All those juices will infuse and it will break down and be a magnificent colour. Earlier, I made a filling suited to my taste buds. It only has one mild chilli in it. I think we need to pack this up for you. Listen, guys, you're the chilli people here. Now, I'm making a, a technically a chilli con carne with a sort of cornbread top. Which one do you want in yours? You can have both. Dorset, Dorset Naga. Naga. How many? Two? Yeah. So, it's gloves time. I'm using gloves for obvious reasons. If I case I rub my eye and the resin that comes from the oil that comes from this very hot Dorset Naga chilli. Now, these are going to pack a little bit of a punch. It's only spice it up a little bit. It should, shouldn't it? Mix that into the dish. So you've still got the other chilli in there, but now it's just going to kick you in the teeth, OK? <laughs> so that really is a proper chilli beef sitting right there. Now, the topping, and use cornbread. If I run through the ingredients, you've got polenta, it's that beautiful yellow, you've got baking powder and you've got flour. The polenta or cornmeal, as it's sometimes called, will give my topping a gorgeous yellow colour and creamy corny flavour. Add two eggs, enriched, and melted butter. And then what I'm going to do is chop up this chilli. Now, it's like a chilli fest. You've got chilli in the dish, you've got chilli in the cornbread as well. And again, just roughly chop this up. This is a green Hungarian hot wax chilli, so it's going to have more bitter flavour than the red. Mix together, then I'm adding buttermilk as it's slightly acidic and will react with the baking powder in the oven, giving the topping an extra rise. It should be like a thick batter. Well, it looks great with the, the chilies in it. You can see it now. You can. Um, and just the little bits in there. So, yeah, something different, isn't it? Stir until you get a soft dropping consistency. So, I'm happy with that. So, what we need to do now is fill these little trays, get some of this gorgeous mixture, and make sure we get those chilies in there. I've just seen a massive one go in there now. You must cook with these things a lot as well at home. What do you think happens to the chilli when you cook it? A lot of the heat in the chilli will obviously dissipate through the dish, so you've got quite a nice, rich sauce there, so it will pick up all the way through that gravy. The flavour and the heat of the chilli won't be lost by heating it up. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this. Are you going to try one of these hot ones? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Spoon your cornbread mixture generously over your chilli. 
This is what you call a proper pie, you know? Yeah. Good wholesome pie. Oh, yes. Now, there's our filled dish. I'm just going to add a bit of cheese to that at the top of that as well. Is this a sort of low tasting chili? It's not a cheddar or. Yeah, you can use a cheddar. cheddar. I mean, it's, do you not think there's enough flavour <laughs> in there already? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so these are your dishes, guys. To make sure I know which one are the really hot ones, I'm going to put a ring of chili on the top of each one, like that. Now, this is going to go straight in the oven to bake 180, 35 minutes, golden brown. And what I did a little bit earlier is something which I find suits my palate more, with a slightly milder chilli in there. So these beauties are my chilli beef cornbread pies. The rich, meaty filling and soft but crunchy cornbread make these pies a comfort food masterpiece. So go on, be brave and load them up with chilli heat too. Guys, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer for yours. Indeed. They look lovely, absolutely lovely.